So, hello Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and everybody else who watches my channel. Um, as promised, we're doing some more content. Um, today is being taken outside since it's, God knows, almost 90 degrees out this morning. Um, we're going to go into a quick issue that has been something that I have brought up and covered many times. Um, just recently, we had an Australian-born woman shot to death in Minnesota by cops. Now, we're going to take this outside the scope of racial violence because I don't care that the cop was Muslim, I don't care that the other cop was white. The huge issue in this country is police training and the resistance by police unions to do away with bad cops. The real glaring thing about this is both of these cops have jackets. Both of these cops have civilian complaints against them that are outstanding and not resolved. The excuse from the assisting officer, the actual cop that engaged in the shooting, refuses to be interviewed. His partner said that they heard a startling noise. Again, poor police training. You're spooked, so your first instinct is to shoot. So if somebody across the street had slammed their front door shut, they should have been shot. And see, this is my issue because you see a number of Black Lives Matter people pro posting on the internet about, oh, now you're upset because it's a white person. No, we were upset back when it was innocent, and here's the key word here, innocent black people being executed by cops. Philando Castile is a prime example of this. And the fact that, yes, the NRA is quiet, the fact that liberals and Democrats are really quiet about this should be alarming to everybody. And the fact that Black Lives Matter has been unusually quiet about this. Unusually quiet. They will deny it and they'll say, you know, they're standing by protesting and standing up for the rights of innocent Americans, but they're not. Only when it's high profile enough for them to make money and get political capital are they involved and you know my big issue and this is exactly where we're coming from with Donald Trump with Republicans with Congress with every political facet of this country this needs to be addressed Hillary Clinton had no plan for it Bernie Sanders had no plan for it and quite obviously Donald Trump has no fucking plan for it either because he's been completely quiet about this Hillary Clinton has been quiet about this since she seems to want to interject herself into everything revolving her loss in an election and sexism and misogyny and, and, and Russian collusion. Where the hell is she on the ongoing cycle of endorsed civilian executions by cops? Where is she? Where are all the civic leaders? Where's Al Sharpton? Where are all these people? And no offense to everybody watching this video, but where the fuck are all the Americans out there who should be really worried about this? Because these are the stepping stones to a police state where your rights don't matter. Where it will be perfectly fine for you to be executed by a trigger-happy cop, and there will be no retribution, no criminal proceeding, no loss of job, because many of these cops just leave one police force and go to another. As, as is quite the example for Tamir Rice. A cop that was deemed unfit to carry a gun just leaves one police force and gets hired by another. And this is again where I ask every cop out there, I don't care how scared you are to be left in an awkward situation. Where are you on this? Why aren't you out there opening your goddamn mouths because you claim you don't support bad cops? But every day, your silence supports them. And I'm going to go even further with this because every American who is silent about this, who somehow gives them a pass based on race or, you know, implied idea that, you know, oh, resisting arrests should guarantee your execution even though you're unarmed and pose no actual threat to a cop, that somehow you're warrant for execution. We have a legislative and executive system in this country that does not make cops judge, jury, and executioner. And the fact that you are comfortable with what equates to an average citizen with a gun being given omnipotent power to execute people bothers the shit out of me. 
and should bother a whole lot of other people too. This is what I don't understand. Anybody who knows people who have come from countries where there were oppressive regimes know that the first tool of oppressive, oppressive regimes was their law enforcement forces. The police forces in Iraq had a notorious history for abductions, murders, rapes, torture. And yet, we're slowly becoming comfortable with this. Where will it end? Where will your comfortable comfort level stop? And by then, you need to realize that it will be too late because then you have no power. We've already subjugated so much power to the federal government. You know, my, my laugh at a lot of my NRA supporting friends are, is, oh, I need a gun to defend myself against the government. You have an AK-47, they have drones that can basically annihilate you from five miles above. Think about that for a second. You have abdicated so much of your private life and your security to the federal government. And now we're slowly abdicating our safety and our privacy to local governments and to our police forces. So, you know, if there is any cop retired or serving right now, you know, I'll guarantee your anonymity, you can disguise your voice, you know, hide your face, do whatever you need to. If you're willing to go on camera and talk to me about this and explain to me why there is this tacit endorsement of criminal acts by cops with little to no prosecution, explain it to me. I invite you to come on and explain it to me and explain it to the millions of people out there that seem to be completely clueless as to what the hell is going on in this country. Thank you.